How do you connect your home network when you're away? Say for example, you wanna make a change in your router or you wanna power on or power off a computer. How do you do it? Do you just open up a bunch of ports to the internet? Do you use a reverse proxy? Maybe a combination with the VPN? Well, if your answer was a VPN or virtual private network, you're in luck because today I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to configure my favorite VPN in my favorite routing software, WireGuard in PFSense. The reason I like WireGuard so much is because of course it's super secure, but it's the fastest VPN protocol out there. Seriously, it can be three to four times faster than OpenVPN and leaves IPsec in the dust. And VPNs are notoriously slow. It's also built into the Linux kernel. The code base is open source and leaner, so it's a lot easier to audit. And well, there are some cons as well, of course. For starters, it's very recent. It was only released, I believe, to the Linux kernel in 2016. So we're still kind of all like a little bit guinea pigs here. Also for authentication, it relies on cryptographic keys. So no username and password. And that might be an issue for some people. But anyway, enough talk. Try WireGuard, you'll love it. And to set it up, don't worry, because I'm going to guide you every step of the way. And I know that dealing with crypto might sound a little bit daunting at first, but don't worry because it's super simple. First, just make sure that you have the latest major release of PFSense. That's 2.7 right now. PFSense doesn't ship with WireGuard out of the box, so you'll need to install the package for it. Go to System and Package Manager and click on Available Packages. Search for WireGuard, and when you get the results, click on the Install button in green right next to it. Click on Confirm and just wait for the installation to complete. If you now click on VPN, you will notice that WireGuard is installed. So, Click on the cheeky WireGuard label and go to Tunnels, select Add Tunnel. On the description, just enter WireGuard. On Port, just leave it as default and then click on Generate so that we can generate a public key. Next, copy the key by clicking on the link right underneath it and paste it onto, say, Notepad, for example, as we are going to need this later. Make sure that Enable Tunnel is selected. Also notice that interface configuration is already provided for you. So, good job PFSense team. Now let's create a network for this interface. Something unique, let's say for example 10.100.0.1 slash 24 and just give it any description that you like. Save the tunnel, click where it says settings and enable WireGuard. Hit save and apply the changes. Make sure you apply the changes because sometimes I forget to do that. <laughs> Now click on Interfaces and Assignment. Then on Interface Groups and notice that the interface for WireGuard is already set up. Awesome, don't touch that. Now go back to Dashboard and check the service status if the WireGuard service is running. If you don't have the service status, just click the plus button and select Service Status and then click Save. I don't have to because I already have it on the dashboard. Sweet, now let's configure the firewall rules. Now, select Firewall, and then Rules, and then choose WireGuard. Add the new rule, make sure that Action is Pass, the interface is WireGuard, and change the protocol to Any. You can enter a description such as WireGuard Pass Any Traffic, and then hit Save, and then Apply Changes. Next, hit WAN, and add the new rule. Set the protocol to UDP, the destination to WAN address, and set custom port from to 51820 and the two ports to 51820, so same port. Enter whatever description you like, such as WireGuard, you know, WireGuard, WAN, pass rule, for example, whatever you want. Then save and apply the changes. Now to connect your home router, you're going to need your internet IP address. And if you don't have a static IP address from your ISP, it's likely that it will change at, well, the whim of your ISP. But don't worry, because Towards the end of the video, I will show you how we can get around this problem. For now, we will use your internet IP address. And in PFSense, you can check it by going back into the dashboard and under interfaces on WAN, that's your public IP. Now, unless of course, if you're doing double NAT, in which case you will have a private IP address like you can see here for me. Now, that's because this isn't my real 
home PFSense instance. This is not my personal instance. It's just a VM running PFSense that I use for my tutorials. So I'll, you know, I'll be using this private IP, but just imagine it's a public one. Now, write down that IP address into Notepad because we will need it in a second. Okay, let's chill for a bit. Ah, pet yourself in the back because we have just created a VPN server directly in our router. I mean, this, this is big stuff, okay? No need for Docker or any kind of like extra VMs. It's running in our router. Cool, the next step is to create our clients. We'll be doing Windows and Android, but Mac and Linux is pretty similar. Of course, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. The channel is still really tiny and I want it to grow a little bit more so that I can keep making tutorials for you guys. Now, let's start with Windows, Linux and Mac clients because, well, it's the same and we're gonna do Android later. Go to WireGuard website and download and install WireGuard for your OS. In this case, I'm going with Windows, but it's the same for Mac or for Linux because this is the same software, just different platform. Fire the application and click the tiny arrow next to Add Tunnel and select Add Empty Tunnel. Instantly, you get a public and a private key generated. Enter the name for your tunnel and add the private IP address. And this is the one that your VPN is going to be using. Make sure it's in the same network that you created earlier uh, for that particular interface. If in doubt, go back to PFSense VPN and WireGuard edit your tunnel and copy the interface IP address. Okay, you can type the address or paste it, the, the one that you just copied, but make sure that you remove the last digit and enter something like 10, for example, followed by slash 24, which is the CIDR or subnet mask. Now for DNS, set whatever you like. I'm using Cloudflare and Google's. Next, copy the public key from your new client's tunnel and let's paste it into the WireGuard server. Go back to PFSense VPN and WireGuard, edit your tunnel right at the bottom and select Add Peer. Make sure it's enabled, add a description, and this could be the name of the client, uh, and enter here the public key that you just copied from the client. This is from here, not the other public key that we saved earlier in Notepad. You can also click on generate pre-shared key for you know, extra safety. On the allowed IPs, copy the IP you assigned yourself in the WireGuard client tunnel so that your VPN is allowed. Just make sure that you set the CIDR to 32. Hit save peer and apply changes. We're nearly there. Now go back to your client tunnel and add the following. Type peer between brackets, then set the public key and this will be the key from the WireGuard server that we stored earlier in Notepad and set pre-shared key to the one we also generated earlier. For allowed IPs, we have two choices, split tunnel or full tunnel. Split tunnel where the only traffic that goes through the network is when you're trying to access a resource inside your network, like your NAS or your Jellyfin server, for example. But if you try to go to google.com, you are not gonna go through the VPN. Full tunnel, where all the traffic just goes through the VPN. Now, option two, full tunnel, tends to make everything slower. For split tunnel, which is what I use, enter the subnets that you would like to access. This should be at least your VPN subnet, which is 10.100.0.0 and the subnets in the networks you would like to access, like in my case, my office VPN, which I can check back in PFSense under interfaces and clicking on the interface that I'm interested in. So you can copy that value, but remember to remove the last digit and put a zero, which is for the network ID slash whatever cider you configured. If you have been following, it will be slash 24. If you want full tunnel, just enter 0.0.0.0 <laughs> slash zero. Well, it's all zero slash zero and all the traffic will go through. Now for the final step, we need to add the endpoint, which is your public IP address, which like I said in the beginning, you can check on your dashboard under interfaces when, or you can go to your router modem and check it there. Now enter endpoint and set it to the IP address followed by colon 51820. Like I said, 
In my case, it's a private IP because I'm doing this tutorial on a VM that I installed exclusively for that purpose. But in your case, it will be a different IP address, like 83 dot something or 212, whatever. Okay, that should be it. Let's try this out. I am going to change the network real quick so that I can use the VPN. Now open the command line. And as you can see, I'm on 192.168.10 subnet. If I try to ping the default gateway of 10.100.0.1, I get nothing. If I try to access PFSense, I get nothing. Now let's enable the VPN. And there you go. I have a response. Let's try to access PFSense at 10.100.0.1, which is the full gateway. There you go. It works. Let's access Google. Blazing fast because I'm not using the, the tunnel. I'm not in full tunnel mode. Now we have a little problem. Like we said in the beginning, if you do not have a static IP assigned from your ISP, your public IP is dynamic, which means it can change. And if that happens, you're screwed. So what we need to do is a way to bind our public IP to a DNS and make sure that our PFSense instance updates that DNS every time that the IP changes. To do that, I recommend duck, duck I always say that. Not duckduck.com, uh, I recommend DuckDNS, which is free. Go to DuckDNS and sign in. Enter your domain. At the top, it will have created a token for you. Now go to PFSense, click Services and Dynamic DNS. From here, click Add, select Custom on the service type, scroll down and update the URL. Just make sure that you change domains to the domain you just created and token to, well, the token that was on the dashboard of DuckDNS. Go back to your WireGuard, click on Edit, and where it says Endpoint, replace that public IP with your DNS host name that you just created in DuckDNS, colon 51A20, which would be something like bbbb123.duckdns.org colon 51A20, or something, whatever the host name is. Okay. Desktop versions done, all configured and working. You already subscribed, <laughs> and if not, please do. For mobile, it's exactly the same procedure. But in the interest of time, I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Install the WireGuard official client app on your phone, click the plus sign, create from scratch, and give it a name. Click the arrows button to generate a private and a public key. On addresses, Enter the IP that you want for your VPN. This time change the last digit so it doesn't clash with your desktop client. Since the Windows client was .10, we're gonna make something incredibly unique, which is .11 and original. <laughs> like 10.100.0.11, followed by slash 24. And for DNS, enter whatever DNS you'd like. Again, I'm using Google and Cloudflare. Copy the public key on your WireGuard client and copy it over to the PFSense WireGuard. Click on Add Peer, enter a description, and paste your mobile phone previously copied public key into public key, and generate a pre-shared key. Before copying it over, under Allowed IPs, enter the IP you assigned to your WireGuard client. In this case, it was 10.100.0.11, with a CIDR of slash 32. Now you can copy the pre-shared key, copy it somewhere. I like to message myself on WhatsApp uh, or use my OneDrive account, Facebook Messenger, you know, use whatever you see fit. Save the peer and apply the changes. Now let's add the peer to our mobile client. Click on add peer and paste there the public key from the WireGuard server. You remember the same one that we used for the desktop client? Okay, it's that one and also paste the pre-shared key we also just generated. On endpoint, you enter your public IP address or the dynamic DNS we just created on DuckDNS, gosh, I keep calling it DuckDuckDNS, on DuckDNS.org, followed by colon 51820. Now enter allowed IP network IDs that you want to access, including the VPN's own subnet ID. This is for using split tunnel or the 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 for the full tunnel. And that's it. WireGuard fully set up on your computer and mobile. 
Now, that was a lot. All this just for a simple VPN connection, but trust me, it's worth it because this is the fastest VPN out there, hands down. And, you know, to access your home network where you're constrained sometimes by your ISP speed, especially the upstream speed, WireGuard is just the best choice. Now, there are other technologies out there that make this process less tedious, like TailScale, for example. I personally don't use it because, well, A, I like to avoid layers as much as possible, and B, well, I like my VPN to be sort of like a multi-directional vector meaning from point A to point B, you know, without the intervention of additional vendors. However, if you want to know more about TailScale, sorry, I mean TailScale, <laughs> TailScale, no pun intended, or any other kind of like novel VPN, you know, things that appeared in the last years, like Zero Tier and TwinGate, and there's a bunch out there, just let me know in the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see them. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and see you soon.